Hello everyone, would you like to make money passively from home without having to leave your system? Get to spend more quality time with your captains and crew? Well, I have a once in a lifetime opportunity for you. And no, it's not a pyramid scheme or even an MLM. With just a little startup cash, let's say one to two mil, you too can make money from home. This amazing cure-all is called colonization. Warning, colonization is not for the faint of heart. It can be expensive and time consuming to set up, but once done, it is a rewarding and valuable asset. Before we get more into the nitty gritty of colonies, we must cover when, where, and how to colonize. Usually when you colonize, you're gonna need at least three tanky combat cruisers and other ships, and one million credits to be supplemented with bounty income as the colony grows. Two million if you babysit your colony and do minimal bounties. However, if you are far away from the core, you may need even more than that, as bounties are scarce and colony access is low. Also, you should have already obtained blueprints for your colony stations and fleet through exploring. Keep any nanoforges and synchrotrons, AI cores you can turn into the Tritachion for three times sale value for credits, as you can easily obtain new cores from farming remnants in the late game. Let's move on to where to colonize. You want to colonize a system with at least two to three less than 150% hazard worlds, preferably with ores, farmland, and volatiles on separate worlds. Systems with yellow-orange stars with moons orbiting a gas giant are ideal as it keeps the planets close together for common defense. Also, you want it to have stable points for stability bonus. Systems should be within 20 light years of core systems for accessibility bonus and for your own sanity as you have less time running to the fringes. Lastly, how to colonize. You just need a thousand extra crew, 200 supplies, 100 machinery, and to click the colonize button. Make sure you have enough crew and supplies afterwards to keep your fleet operational. Also, if you're running low on fuel or supplies, get up an early way station so you can purchase fleet necessities. Before we get into making money, we'll go over some basic building stuff. For your first colony, you're going to need 150,000 credits for your first industry which should probably be farming or mining, as you'll have a lot of needs for that. Your spaceport will be automatically built. You'll need 250,000 credits for a tier 1 orbital station. You'll also need 250,000 credits for your patrol HQ. And then you'll also need probably around 100,000 credits for growth incentives. At this stage, only pirates will attack you, but you're going to need to babysit it until you can get some tier 2 upgrades so it will be able to defend itself. Once you have enough money for either a second colony or to get your upgrades up to tier 2, then you can go start out and do some more missions. And then for your second colony, you should focus on getting either mining or farming, uh, whichever one you didn't get first there. And then also make sure you get a patrol HQ and orbital station up fast. Also on your first planet, when it reaches size 4, you might want to consider upgrading your patrol HQ to a military base so you can have stronger defenses in the system. Two fast notes, do not turn on Freeport until you're able to fend off some raids, and do not use AI core until you're able to fend off hegemony inspections. Uh, also, as you get more colonies up, focus on getting at least one of every industry to minimize cost, and also upgrade spaceports to megaports so you can get greater accessibility. Now that we have some basic colonies up, we can switch to our ultimate goal, making money. When we found a colony, we want to turn a profit, and to do so, we must optimize three things, as they are what ultimately determine money made and lost. Local income. Local income is derived from the population. This is a set number that increases as the colony grows. It is derived from the population and is 10,000 times the colony size a month, and is a fixed income. The second thing is export profits from trade. This is heavily dependent on what and how many goods the colony produces and how well it can be expected to bring these to a market. This is the primary source of income for developed colonies. Export profits I went over in my economy video, but basically you want as large a market share as possible by getting high production, accessibility, stability, and rating other markets. Lastly is upkeep costs from buildings in the colony. These increase with the size of the colony and the colony's hazard rating. 
As this is the sole source of expenditures, limiting upkeep costs is essential to maintaining profits. Upkeep costs are calculated by multiplying upkeep costs with hazard rating and colony size minus 2, and can be cut in half by meeting demands in faction. These three things are heavily impacted by colony size, accessibility, stability, good availability, hazard rating, and industry and structures. For colony size, a colony size ranges from 3, smallest, to 10, the biggest, and determines the size of its economic activity. Basically, everything a colony does scales directly with this number. As a colony grows, so will the output of buildings housed on the colony, as well as the number of industries that the colony can support and accessibility rating of the colony. All of these increase the income a colony will generate. However, its structures will also require more upkeep to maintain and require more goods to keep running, which means that bigger is not necessarily always better, but it usually is. The colony's monthly growth is added in daily increments to the progress bar below the population and infrastructure building. Once filled, the colony grows to the next size. Negative growth reduces the progress bar, but can never shrink a colony's size. High accessibility, low hazard rating, high stability, appropriate buildings, and freeport status increase the colony growth passively. The player can also simulate economic growth by spending money on growth incentives. This is a good way to get a small colony off its feet, but costs increase significantly as the colony grows. Additionally, colonies will suffer a growth penalty if houses fewer industries than the maximum number it can support due to unemployment. Alright, now we'll go on to building output. Buildings all provide a certain benefit to the colony in the form of commodities, added stability, or accessibility, or improved defenses. If a building produces commodities, its output often scales with colony size. The refining industry, for instance, produces metals at size plus zero and transplutonics at size minus two. On a size 5 colony, it will produce 5 units of metal and 3 units of transplutonics. Producing and exporting commodities increases the colony's income in a rather involved way. Uh, we got into the details of that in the economy video, but roughly speaking, doubling a particular commodity's output doubles income generated from exporting this commodity. Demand. Almost every building requires a certain commodity to function properly the number of which often depends on colony size. If this demand is not met, the building will function at reduced capacity, usually on a one-for-one -one basis. The refining industry, for instance, demands ore at size plus two and transplutonic ore at size plus zero. On a size five colony, it will require seven units of ore and five units of transplutonic ore. If only five units of ore are available, the industry's metal output will be be reduced by negative 2 from 5 to 3 units. Now we'll move on to hazard. Every planet comes with a set of colony conditions that make it more or less desirable. Planets of a similar type will have similar traits, so a volcanic world will always be hot, extremely hot, and have some degree of tectonic activity, but will never have any farmland. The first type of conditions modify the hazard rating of the planet, which can increase upkeep cost and slow down population growth. As a rule of thumb, having a low hazard rating is the most desirable trait for a planet. Some conditions, such as decivilized or high gravity, come with further penalties, minus 2 stability or minus 10% accessibility, respectively, and should be avoided. Others, such as low gravity, have compensating benefits, like plus 10% accessibility, and are much more tolerable. Accessibility is a measure of how well connected a colony is to the global market and helps determine how big of a slice of the global market's pie the colony profits from. Roughly speaking, doubling a colony's accessibility doubles the revenues from exports, so getting this number as high as possible is beneficial. Colonies in proximity to other colonies gain a bonus to their accessibility which makes planets close to the inhabited central markets desirable. Accessibility is further modified by a colony's size and buildings, 
hostilities between the colony's factions and other factions, administrator's skill, and free port status. Stability, in my opinion, is the most important stat. Stability influence a number of other factors, as shown in the table. Most notably, a colony at 10 stability has the income it generates increased by 50%. This is a huge bonus for small colonies that are just starting out, and is essential for making larger colonies profitable. There are quite a few ways to increase the stability of a colony. Make sure the needs of population and infrastructure are met. Supplying enough domestic and luxury goods to satisfy demand increases stability by plus one each. However, not having enough food to feed the colony penalizes stability by minus one for each missing unit. Not having a comm relay in system reduces stability by minus one. Building a makeshift comm relay erases this penalty and gives a plus one bonus for a two point swing. If the system has a domain era comm relay, activating it gives a plus two stability bonus for a three point swing. Constructing buildings in the colony can increase your stability. Also, an assigning an appropriate administrator to govern the colony can increase stability. There are three different skills your administrators can have. You can have fleet logistics, which gives plus 30% accessibility and plus 25% larger fleets for defense. Planetary operations, which increases ground defenses by 50% and gives plus 2 stability. And also industrial planning, which improves efficiency of industries and increases income by 10%. In my humble opinion, planetary operations is the best of these, as stability is such an important skill. Right, lastly, we'll go over a couple of stuff to help keep your colony alive. Uh, when you're, in, you're still in your early phases, do not build tech mining, fuel production, turn on free port, or use AI cores. Because if you do, you will get expeditions, and if that happens, just pay them off. But it's really better just to avoid building those things to avoid getting expeditions. Also, in the beginning, you want to avoid Ludic Pass cells, and to do this, avoid using AI cores, as well as spreading out your industry between multiple planets. Alright, that's all for you guys, folks. Uh, sorry about the late release. Um, this has been Top Guides. Uh, you know, comment, subscribe, and smash that like button.